Hey everyone, I hope you are having a wonderful time. Today, I'm going to share this SMS SU10 deck I tried and I've been using in my system, so I'm going to share my experience. This one retail for 900 US dollars. It uses the ESS ES9038 Pro dual chip, and they developed their own clock system to utilize the performance of ES9038 Pro chips conjunction and you know they design their own clock system with CK3 so which is big kudos to SMS Audio they try to make things better and better every generation that they released so this deck can be have for 900 bucks but what it can do is amazingly great what I mean by that is it can do pretty much every digital audio formats. DSD, PCM, high res everything that you can throw at them, including MQA-CD. Not only MQA-CD, it can also do the digital to analog conversion from MQA capable CD transport as well. So which is probably that is the biggest selling point in my opinion for a lot of people who use the MQA as the main profile music format, let alone if you're going to do the streaming or not. So this is the deck that can do pretty much all the digital formats. So inputs, it has your seven digital inputs, USB-B, USB-C and all the you know, use your digital inputs, including AES and I2S. I try all that. So what I notice is this is the uh, probably one of the deck that you don't need to have uh, DDC to improve the clarity and background noise. So main purpose of DDC is reduce the uh, jitter and noise from a uh, USB inputs. So this one has a really good uh, performance and good quality sound that either you use in USB-C or USB-B inputs. So let's go through the menu system here. This is the remote control that come with the uh, this SMS SU10. It's very simple design remote control that I'm going to use to control it. If you hit the middle button, it will take you to the uh, setting menu. If you hit the middle button again, it will take you to seven inputs USB B C Bluetooth optical coaxial AES I square S etc. So if you hit the left arrow it will get out of menu. Then again if you change the left arrow it will take you to the output. Hit the um, middle button again it will take you to the, the inside of the menu and then you can select from there left arrow then PCM filter I'm using fast linear and then DSD filter, 47K cutoff. So sound color, you can do uh, 10 different sound colors from a standard sound. So that is the uh, sound color. Back out of there with the left arrow and pre-mode. So fixes for the, uh, if you are only using it as a deck. And then F and key, you can choose either outputs or you want to use it as your dedicated input for Bluetooth. DPL, that is a 5 is standard, but you can change it around. But 5 is the default. I square S mode, that is the normal or reverse, that is depending on connecting component. The DSD channel for the uh, I square S is the PCM left and right stereo. So that is for my setting and setup that I have. And then main menu, if you hit the uh, left arrow again, I really love the display that they use in this deck. Vibrant color with nice dark background, so which is very easy to see. My setup is very simple, Denon PME S611 integrated amplifier using Sony HAP-Z1 ES as a music server without using the inside digital analog conversion connected with Oya Ide Neo Class A USB cable and my cable is all, uh, not audio quest my cable is Mogami 2549 the top of the line uh, XLR cable which is better than 
audio quest gold or platinum if I remember it right because that transparency and noise rejection and clarity that it can produce with great detail sound which is this combination can prove to be very good combination and synergy between my components using those cables pairing with this musician night one and this JBL 100 classic 75th anniversary edition speakers so what I like about this deck is improvements compared to previous generations improvements are major improvements not the small incremental you know very subtle improvement that other people are doing overall performance you don't need to measure it because you can I can hear it so overall transparency noise performance clarity and detail sound reproduction incredible detail and clean and clear sound quality that it can produce that is the one of the best detail sounding deck that you can have under a thousand US dollar how good is it can be compared in terms of uh, transparency and colorless detail sound to like five thousand dollar decks from high-end manufacturer so that kind of sound that it can produce in terms of noise performance and clarity so it uses the dual ES9038 Pro chip so those chips are a little bit on high-end side of a ESS line so generally I like the uh, AKM chips or ROM audio uh, ROM uh, digital analog converter chips for you know based on my personal preference nothing to do with my background ESO chips I tend to find them to be a little bit on a harder side of a sound signature instead of organic natural and like a easier to listen kind of sound quality that I experience using R2 or DEX or ROM chips and AKM chips those kind of uh, you know chips that I had experience ESL chips this one is uh, better than other people did in terms of performance wise because absolutely quiet background and passages yet it will still shows you imperfections and faults in recording let's say background noises or pop and you know tape noises and everything you will still hear that if exist but if you feed high quality well recorded music it will deliver it back to you with absolute great musical sound so overall transparency if it's recording quality is poor then it can get a, a little bit edgy and bright with the sun music that is uh, a little downside with the most transparent decks in general but this one is not unlistenable or absolute bothering kind of thing it can get bright tiny bit of it can introduce tiny bit of brightness with the poor quality recording especially if you are playing above 65 to you know 75 db range then you will absolutely hear that that is depending on your media as well but giving good quality recording highest possible quality music it would give you absolutely musical sound without breaking the bank sms audio did great job on this thing so what they did was they improved the performance developing their own clock system to have the best performance out of es903 a pro dual chip setup as well as improving the chassis this uh, chassis is extruded from solid aluminum to give you rigidity and stability that it may need for the best performance and next thing is they also offer you two usb inputs in total of seven digital inputs that they provided so two usb input it's much needed in modern day music playback because we don't only use one computer or one music server we might also want to try you know using the laptop and using the music server or different kind of component pairing it will enable 
a lot of options for our music lovers and audio files along with giving you highest performance possible because Two inputs is better than one input, right? No one's gonna argue that for USB alone. So if you're gonna use I square S or AES, it will even enhance the overall performance, which I try. But some people say that is a tiny bit of improvement that not worth doing it. That is their opinion. But this is the deck that not necessarily have to have DDC for to get the best performance out of the USB inputs. This one can deliver highest possible performance USB noise control given the size and the standalone unit. Biggest plus is absolute transparent sound and absolute quiet sound signature. And what I like about them is space between the notes is incredibly good. I mean spaciousness and airiness that it can produce and bass quality is well controlled and very well defined and musically engaging to listen. Mid range and voices are very good and totally uh, transparent yet still giving you good enjoyable sound quality. So highs can be you know, depending on pairing components and depending on playing music. So media and your pairing component makes makes a big difference. Based on my pairing, I really like the pairing with JBL than the uh, this Musician Night One. Musician Night One sound the best with R2R decks. So I when I try with Musician Night One, sound is very transparent and almost to like a flat sound kind of sound signature that they produce together. So I scratch that and I move over to this JBA and I can totally enjoy denser and fuller and deeper soundscape with incredible amount of detail that it can produce. So I try with a lot of different music. I try let's say Ray Charles, uh, I believe to my soul or those kind of uh, Old music has a lot of tape noise in the background. Those are easily reproduced, still giving you the voices and vocals and everything is incredibly as good as it can be. So that, those are the highlights that I like to share with you. Another highlight is the chassis that they improve two USB inputs. So modern day music lovers or audio files definitely need two USB input, okay? Although it has the AES and I square S and all the U optical and coaxial and everything, but AES, not every component has the AES output, not all digital components. I square S, same thing, not every digital component has the I square S output, but USB outputs, pretty much all digital device has the, uh, some type of USB output, let alone, you know, mobile device or whatnot, then you will have that option that you can play, you can use two different components connected to one deck together. You have you don't have to switching the USB cable around, so which is a big plus. The performance is equally good, but in my experience, I find it to be USB-C is a bit quieter than the uh, my USB-B connection. That's probably due to the cable that I'm using. So my USB-C cable is the uh, fan music USB cable using the OCC crystal coppers uh, conductors. And you know, that is maybe, that is the making the difference. Also, using the Audiovana and Sony makes it different too. So that's a little bit of different in sound, but it's not major different. It's just a tiny bit of different there. So the performance, sound quality, musicality, transparency, the price that you get you get for this kind of component is incredible. I mean, 
$900, you get reference great sound quality and transparency, still providing you very good soundscape and scale as well as dynamic range that it can produce. And best of all, absolute quiet background and absolute bargain that you can have for this price point. That is my experience, my friend. If you are shopping for under a thousand US dollar deck, if your end game or if your maximum budget is a thousand US dollar, this deck should be in very short list of your audition list. Personally, I like this more than uh, topping D90 SE kind of sound quality. D90 SE also have a transparent sound. This one is better in like a separation and spaciousness and three-dimensional like notes that it can produce. That is an absolutely great buy in my opinion for the price that you can get for 900 bucks. Pairing components, I would suggest you to try with the uh, neutral sounding components, amplifiers or neutral sounding speakers, etc. Or you can even have a better balance if you have a warmer side of a system, they should pair really nice. And if your end game deck has a limit of a thousand US dollar, this could be it in 2022. This is the highest possible performance that you can have in under US, under a thousand US dollar. That is my experience, my friend. This is highest recommendation from me you to try it. Thank you very much for watching and happy listening. Sad, oh, I can't 
Mr. Tori Boy, Keisuke-san. On the guitar, Onimayoshi-san. 